Hey folks, David from Sunday Sounds here, and today's video is all about transpose inside of Main Stage 3. I'm going to explain the options available to you to transpose your signal so that you can play in any key and get the right audio out of Main Stage. Now, transposing just means you're shifting things around in one place or another. Most hardware keyboards have built-in transpose buttons. Some of them are only able to shift up or down in octaves by default. Others shift in semitones. What your hardware keyboard is capable of can only be answered by you checking the user manual or doing some Googling online. But you don't have to rely on your hardware keyboard to handle transposing for you. There's a few different ways that you can approach doing this inside of main stage itself. And I'm going to start off showing you some general ways, some generic ways that you can approach transposing. And we're going to start at sort of the smallest building block. Then I'm going to show you how to build sort of a concert level transpose control that's really easy to set up. We're actually going to modify this keyboard minimalist template that comes with main stage. I'll show you how to set that up. And then I'm going to walk you through how transpose is designed and implemented in the Sunday Keys template because we think that's the simplest way for you to approach transposing in main stage no matter what. So first off, let me show you how to just adjust transpose within an individual channel strip. So I'm going to select this channel strip here and then in the inspector at the bottom of the screen, I'm going to click the MIDI input tab. If you don't see the inspector, just click this eye right here while you're in edit mode that shows and hides the inspector. Now I have a transpose section right here. I can adjust this in semitones or if you want, there's this window here that lets you adjust it in octaves. So let's say for example, maybe I only wanted this sound all the way up here on the right hand of the keyboard, but I actually wanted it to sound a lot lower than that. So I could grab this and bring it down 24 steps. And now that sound sounds like it's being played in the middle of the keyboard, even though it's actually being played very high up. So that's the simplest sort of lowest level way that you can transpose. You could transpose an individual channel strip. Now you can also transpose an entire patch. Click any patch in your patch list and adjust transpose patch here. So let me bring this layer range back to cover the full range of the keyboard. And now I'm gonna play a C chord right here. I'm going to now adjust transpose patch up to semitones. You can see that I'm still playing a C chord, but it now sounds like a D chord. Go up two more semitones. Now sounds like E, F, etc., etc. You can go down, up as much as you'd like. And now we're back to C. So you can transpose any patch here. And we'll talk about a couple ways where this sort of transposition breaks down in just a couple minutes of the video. So make sure, especially if you want to use MIDI effects in main stage, that you keep watching because you cannot always rely on this simple transposition to do what you need it to do. But now I wanna show you how to set up a global concert level transpose control that will also work for individual transposition of unique patches. First, we're gonna click on the concert level of main stage. That's the title of the concert right here in this orange folder. And here in the MIDI tab of concert settings in the inspector, we have this transpose concert control. So if I set this to two and then go back to this patch, we're hearing a D chord, even though I'm playing a C chord. You can see that transpose patch is actually still set to zero, but transpose concert is set to two. So this is sort of a global way to transpose. The problem with this is it's really easy to forget it. There's no visual representation of what's happening. And because the on-screen keyboard is showing the original notes fed into main stage, there's no indication at all of what transposition is being applied. So let's add a couple custom controls to the workspace to let you both adjust this transposition and have a visual reminder of whatever transposition is being applied. So let's go to layout mode and start by dragging in a parameter text control. That's this little guy right here. And let's just place it right here. Now we're gonna also add a couple of buttons. Start by bringing in one button Click and drag the corner to shrink it down. We don't need it to be that big. Then I'm gonna copy and paste this button and we're gonna put it in line right here. I'll show you why we're doing this in just a second. 
Now with those controls in the workspace, we're back in edit mode. You wanna make sure you're at the concert level. Again, that's the title of the concert in this orange folder. Now we're gonna add a few mappings. So we're gonna click on the parameter text box first, choose actions, and then go down here and select MIDI transpose. You can see it now says XPS concert. That's short for transpose concert. And this number zero represents the amount of transposition being applied. We can adjust the max and minimum range here. And I recommend that you do that because 96 up and 96 down is a huge range to navigate. It's more than you'll ever need. So we could set that to something a little bit more manageable like 24 and negative 24. So now we can actually adjust this control and this transposition is going to be applied. So if we were to click back on the concert and go to the MIDI tab and then adjust this control, we can see that it's mirrored right there. And this is cool. I'm adjusting this text box by clicking and dragging it up or down, or you can two finger swipe up or down on a trackpad. But that's not necessarily the handiest way to do this, especially during a live performance. You probably wanna map a couple of buttons to do this. So we're actually gonna duplicate this mapping. So still at the concert level, click this button here. We're gonna choose actions, MIDI transpose again. We're gonna set the button on and button off to these ranges that we mirrored for this control here, 24 and negative 24. Then we're gonna choose range mode and select increase value. Now this is a newer feature that was added to main stage in main stage 3.5, the ability to incrementally increase or decrease parameter values. So this button is now going to increase, transpose one time, each time it's clicked. We're gonna do the exact same thing here for this button, but we're gonna create a decrement only control. So we're gonna choose button on 24, button off negative 24, range mode, decrease value. So now we can click these buttons to go up and down in this transposition and we're only gonna be able to go up to 24 and down to negative 24. So this is really, really cool. And we could still swipe or click and drag as well if we wanted. Now, here's where it gets a little bit tricky. You wanna do something really specific here. Make sure that this concert transpose is set to zero before you navigate to any specific patch. Let me explain why. First, let's change the parameter label here. We're just gonna name this transpose. Now I wanna explain why. Check out what happens here if I change this to two and then go to the patch. All of a sudden it jumped to zero. That's because this is one of the only controls in main stage that actually persists settings across different patch changes, meaning each patch can have a specific unique setting for this transpose control, but it's only going to apply for that specific patch. So if I go back here, we can see that that's still set to two. This is why it's important that you don't actually adjust this at the concert level Otherwise, you're gonna have that transposition applied, but see no visual indication that that is the case. But as long as you don't do that at the concert level, you can set transpose to any specific desired value at the patch level, and those changes will be recalled when you choose that specific patch. So let's say that we want this first patch to be transposed up two steps, and we want the second patch to be transposed down 12 steps. Now, as we jump between these two patches, those settings are gonna be maintained. Here's my C chord that sounds like a D chord. And then back with that transposition turned off, D, and then here, a full octave down because of that transposition. And you don't have to do anything else other than make sure the value you desire is set for each patch. And then anytime you select that patch, this transposition is gonna automatically be recalled and it's gonna be applied to whatever MIDI you feed into main stage. And this is the very first thing that happens to your MIDI. So it reaches the on-screen keyboard in its original form, and then it is sent to all of your channel strips that are generating audio, all of the MIDI, even before your MIDI effects is transposed in whatever fashion you've designated with this control here. So this is really cool, but like I mentioned a minute ago, it gets complicated when you start working with MIDI effects. So let's turn on this instance of chord trigger. I programmed this instance of chord trigger to trigger a chord when I play C2 on the keyboard. So with transposition turned off, this C2 triggers the chord that I want, right? But check out what happens if I start messing with this transpose. I see a C2 on this keyboard in the workspace, but the chord trigger effect is now receiving a D2. 
So what you would maybe expect would be that the output of the chord trigger would also be transposed up two steps, but that's not how it works because the MIDI is actually transposed before the MIDI effects section of the channel strip. Your head spinning yet? This is a little bit complicated. The way that MIDI is routed in main stage gives you a lot of flexibility and power, but it doesn't necessarily give you intuitive results. So what we'd want to do if we actually wanted to play and see and hear this chord trigger output in D is we could click and drag this chord trigger up. There's our D. Or if we wanted to, we could leave it down there and actually play a B flat. And then we'd need to transpose this up be a chord transpose two steps. So it gets really messy because you have these sort of offsetting transpositions that you need to apply and they're not intuitive at all. Trust me, we've been programming these sorts of offset transpositions for years and years at Sunday Sounds and they still don't really make any intuitive sense. You just have to do the math, figure out what the offset is and then apply it. That's way outside the scope of this video. If you want to, you can scratch it out with pen and paper figure out with this amount of transposition, where's my chord going to sit? How much do I want to transpose that chord? But it is a big pain and hassle to sort out. And it's just really complicated. It's not really a musical way to think about the chords and the transposition that you'd like to apply. So we think we've solved this problem in a really cool way inside of Sunday Keys. So I'm gonna close this concert and show you how we've set this up. If you're familiar with Sunday Keys, then you already have this feature available to you. We call it Easy Transpose. And we actually build this offset transposition into the Sunday Keys template and all of its sounds. It allows you to adjust transposition in two ways. It allows you to adjust the keys you play on the keyboard, we call that the play-in key, and the resulting output, what you're going to hear. We call that the hear-in key. When play in and hear in are set to the same key, you can play and do whatever you want and you're gonna hear exactly what you'd expect. But if you wanted to hear in a different key than you were playing in, you would just adjust this box here. Or maybe the opposite's true. Maybe you learned a song in the key of D but your worship leader takes it down a step on Sunday morning because their voice is tired. So you could play it in D. But we're actually hearing the output in C. Bring this up to D so you can hear the difference. And you've got all these keys available to you. Of course, every major key. So you can apply this transposition as creatively as you need to. It makes it easy to practice along to an MP3 recording at home that's in a different key than you're going to play it in. And of course, if you learn songs in one key and then the, the script gets flipped at the last second and you need to play it in a different key, you've got that flexibility. Of course, it can also work as just general transpose. So if you need to just go up or down a step or two, then this makes it really simple. So that's how Easy Transpose works in a basic way when there's no MIDI effects involved but Sunday Keys includes really awesome and powerful MIDI effects that you get to take full advantage of, and they're all automatically going to follow Easy Transpose settings in the new version of Sunday Keys. Let me show you what I mean. I'm gonna change the MIDI effect for the Alter Call Pad from the octave effect to the chord effect. I'm gonna turn this effect on. So now when I play bass notes, you're gonna hear this awesome full chord voiced for modern worship music just playing one note and we're hearing this full chord and since our here in setting is set to C that's the key that we're going to hear the chord in but if I change this to E and I'll change play in as well then now we're going to hear these voicings in E and these automatically and seamlessly follow the settings of Easy Transpose. So I could play them in C and still hear them in E, or we could go up to A flat. So all the sounds in Sunday Keys for Main Stage that have the MIDI effect modifier have this chord option, and it's gonna follow the play in and hear in transpose settings. This gets even cooler when we're working with sequences. Let me show you how this one particular sequence follows the play in and hear in settings. Here's the sequence. We could bring it up 
to E flat. We could play it in G. Still hearing it in E flat. Now in D flat. Now in C. All of this transposition automatically, seamlessly applied, and ready to go with the rest of the sounds. So we think Easy Transpose is an incredibly powerful tool. You don't have to do any math to apply this transposition. It's available with all the sounds in Sunday Keys, all song-specific patches from Sunday Sounds, and we'll be adding this feature to all of our expansion main stage sound libraries that have Sunday Keys compatibility. So let's sum up. First, you learned how to apply MIDI transposition to an individual channel strip. Then we talked about applying it to a patch and globally at the concert level showed you how to use a parameter text box and a couple of buttons to be able to incrementally adjust those things as you prepare your patches. Then I explained how that can cause some conflicts as you start to involve MIDI effects, specifically chord triggers, things like that. Then I've shown you how the play in and hear in transpose settings in Sunday Keys seamlessly integrate into the library and solve all of those problems for you. So you can just make sure that the keys you need are selected in these boxes you can focus on playing. So that's all about transposing inside of Main Stage 3. Leave a comment and let us know if you have any questions. If you'd like to learn more about the Sunday Keys template, we'll put a link in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.